Hello, beautiful Amira. I am so grateful to be here with you today. How are you doing? Thank you so much, Caitlin. I'm good. Thank you. I'm very well. I'm happy to be here and happy to see you. <laughs> Yay, me too. I'm so grateful for this collaboration. And um, Amira is just a beautiful healer. She is a powerful healer. She's a coach. She's dealt with so much mental health and trauma, and she just knows how to navigate the spiritual world with grace, love, and compassion. So today we're going to kind of dive into your background and your spiritual gifts and your offerings so we can share that with the world so they can get connected with you because you have such beautiful offerings. Um, um, are you ready for that, Amira? First, thank you for the beautiful intro. And yes, I am. <laughs> okay, yay. All right. So first, I kind of wanted to dive into your connection with um, intimacy and sexual um, energy, Tantra, healing with couples. I would I would love to know further about how you got into that and what, what has that journey been like and how do you share that with your clients? Well, I've been always interested in the um, in the intimate part and the intimacy and the sensuality of sex. So that was my personal preference since I was a teenager. And because I was always on the, I was always uh, kind of accused of being, oh, you're too emotional. Oh, you're too mm -hmm. sensitive. And to be honest, I did not know how to navigate that because for me, that was like, you're broken. Something is wrong with you. And I was like, why am I like this? And I was even on the verge of, I think that what drove me to do all these martial arts because inside I felt like I want to be a guy. I want to be insensitive. I want to hop on, hop off from one relationship to another. I don't want to feel much as much as I feel. Mm. But then that got me nowhere. <laughs> I just became because I was basically fighting against myself. And I think on this journey or on this path or in this reincarnation, all my my teachers, my my healing journey, which started with myself, because I was always very curious about everything. Like since I was a teenager, I was always I wanted to dive deeply into spirituality, into the nature of the soul, into the nature of the self, because I was trying for I, I did not feel fulfilled or satisfied. So I was taking tons of courses, traveling to India, yoga, all these kind of stuff. But my biggest teachers were my partners and the people whom I suffered with. Because every single time I come out from a relationship and a teacher comes out also. Like this was my introduction because the suffering, the pain... Then, then, then I learned something. Of course, the, 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 one of my first, first teachers was, was Eckhart Tolle. And then uh, I love the work of Neil Donald Walsh because he kind of dissects the ego with Eckhart Tolle, which is, which is in my opinion, um, the reason the ego is the downfall and the reason that any any relationship fails, not an intimate relationship, but any kind of relationship, work-wise, when the ego takes over, that's it. So my approach to sexuality and sensuality is first, well, I, I, mostly, I, I mostly like to refer to the Taoism version of uh, sacred sexuality, which is the sexual Kung Fu and the teachings of... Um, Taoism on that and because I have a background also I studied wellness so Ayurveda and I studied folk medicine and natural medicine so and, and in, uh, in TCM traditional Chinese medicine they used to use sexual energy for healing so sexual energy is very potent energy and it is the energy of creation because you create a human being with the sexual energy. And basically, it's the energy of everything, your immunity, your digestive system, everything comes from this potent energy. It's just, you call this part of this energy, sexual energy, when it's concentrated in your pelvic area. So the first thing I do is, is to, to, to make people aware of 
how does the mechanism of sexual energy work? You know, this is the first part because people are unaware and they don't understand how it works and they don't understand how sacred this is. And, and when you start to be connected with who you are, it's completely different because you ramp up your sexual life, you ramp up, you take your yourself to higher realms with this energy. This energy is not just about um, orgasm. It's also about connecting to your to the creator because it is the energy of creation. So yeah. it's the energy of the spirit. So I make people first aware of the sacredness of the sexual energy, which is also being aware of most of the, my clients are, I have many clients who have porn addiction problems, who have excessive masturbation problems, and this can destroy your sex life, basically, because you waste and you release your sexual energy, especially men. And this energy is sacred, you know, and you will deplete yourself mentally, emotionally. Uh, so so that's that's the, the, the basics of how I work first with people, whether singles or couples. And I start I start from there. And then I give when when they are couples, I always give them connection exercises, breathing together playfulness and um, some exercises that are some of them are based in tantra some of them um, is a mix of, of all the stuff that i have learned from sacred sexuality so they they can learn how to connect in the heart chakra level and move this energy from the base chakras because this is where men and women connect because the energy moves differently, the sexual energy from men and women. So they need to connect here so the bonding can happen. So that's that's the the, the, the like the kickstart of, of any any work that I do with either singles or couples to make them aware of how sacred and potent the sexual energy is. That is so powerful. And thank you for just sharing it, your journey too, because it's like amazing how your sensitivity led you to kind of into these masculine ways of being that weren't really authentic to you. And now you're just in this pure, primal, sensual, sexual energy of creation. And it's, it's like you're emanating it or being it um, and navigating or helping navigate others through that journey, which it, as you're talking about, it, I didn't realize how sacred and how powerful it is. And um, that, yeah, probably a lot of people don't connect from this space right here. So as you're speaking about it um, in this world, we kind of probably are so busy and distracted that we connect in different ways. Um, so thank you for yeah, all the wisdom and knowledge you just shared about how sacred um, our sexual energy is. It is really powerful. Um, as we we ex expand more into this, how do you approach dealing with um, people who have experienced trauma or who have mental health, you know, concerns or issues in their life with this background of yours? So I would use a quote from from my biggest and one of my spiritual teachers uh, that has a huge impact on my life, which is Muji. He says, rather than this is my approach to mental health or healing, and this is where, um, where I found the most potent and powerful results because um, I used to work with mostly immigrants and refugees and um, and a lot of people who have, whether rape victims, trauma, um, you know, seeing somebody killed from their family or etc. And and my personal approach, which I see uh, that works the best, is rather than um, catching fish one by one, putting a net on on all the fish, you know, putting one net and catching all the fish. So you cannot go 
in my opinion, or this did not, I, don't, I didn't see that the Western approach really helped in that sense, go fishing for trauma one by one. But my personal approach is I make a separation between what happens to the person and the awareness of the problem. So mm -hmm. in my in my approach, this identification with the problem takes fifty percent of the weighing of the problem. You have that people have to be aware that they are not the personality. You are not your emotions. You are not your thoughts. You are not your trauma. You are not your experience. You are not your story. You are not your history. Why? Because if you are these things, if they pass, then you will pass. And you cannot mm -hmm. give me a report about this. Giving the report about this means that there is an awareness. There is something behind in the background watching this happen. Wow. So when you realize and stand in that background, you understand that there is a higher self there is a higher awareness that is experiencing these traumas for some reason. And it could be for your, that your sole contract in this life is to evolve in a certain way. So you had to go through this experience. Like for me, I had to go through all these relationships where I had to be the sensitive one. I had... To, to be pushed out of my comfort zone and find healing and look for other ways and, and finally embrace that part of me. Okay, I'm the sensitive, I'm the expressive, I'm the emotional. But guess what? If I was not like that, I wouldn't be able to be an empath. I wouldn't be able to, be, to, to do the healing work that I do on an energetic level to be able to connect with people and understand what they are going through. Right. So also, so so the thing is, every you are the experiencer of the the, the trauma or whatever you want to call it, but you don't have to identify with it. I love that because it's an ephemeral experience. It's not original to you. These things are not original to you. So when you realize that you are the consciousness in which on his in, in its presence, this happens. An image of you, a personality, happens that this consciousness takes is experiencing through you. You are an individualized part of the consciousness. So this is the big picture. However, saying that not everybody is primed for that kind of knowledge. True. So I have a simpler approach to these things, but this is my aim. My aim to empower people. My aim is not to let someone come for trauma after trauma after trauma after yeah. trauma. My aim is to give you the master key. I love master that. key to everything, not one problem. The master key. Because you should be able to navigate all problems with one solution. And that's to realize that you are the experiencer of whatever happens to you. You are consciousness. But you are here to experience these things. But you are not these things. You are not your thoughts. Or you that was so powerful. Thank you. I feel like I'm speaking to like Eckhart Tolle almost like it's like a chant. <laughs> like, well, you are you, you are another form of consciousness, but that was so powerfully said. And I can imagine that the work you do with your clients is so healing and powerful because it is a challenge to recognize that you are not these things that you are just the experiencer and there's a witness behind and yes. that in itself is so empowering you know once people recognize oh this isn't me yeah. so I can imagine their lives are changed after having an experience with you because it's like you're giving them back the key they're giving back their yes. power like yes 
you are just, it's coming through and that's it. It's just a wave in the ocean. So, um, so beautifully said, I had goosebumps in some of what you were saying and thank you. That was really enlightening and expansive for me. It's like, I'm getting a teaching right now. Um, beautiful. I'm going to segue into, um, you know, you are into, you know, the sexual healing and, you know, the, talking about the experiencer and the witness and all that. How does that apply to energy healing? I, I mean, you've been on this journey of energy healing. How do you integrate that into your journey as well? And what does that look like for you? So first I have to say that now I re I kind of incorporated my work into another kind of field, which is, I feel like it was needed. So I do now performance and energy and wellness healing, which is basically how to enhance, um, a person's performance or how to enhance um, a person's, uh, if they want to, like, for instance, I get some clients who are uh, startup founders or entrepreneurs, and they want to take their energy level to the next level. They want to have high performance. They want to biohack their body. They want, so I kind of incorporated all this in kind of one capsule or one program, which is, um, when I when we are talking about performance, wellness, mental illness, it's like taking a, a car to the the car shop, you know, to a garage to check it. It's one unit. You cannot divide. Like that is why, in my opinion, the Western approach does not work. That is why Ayurveda works. Why? Because it looks at you as one unit you know what is wrong with you on all levels so when we're talking about somebody coming and they say we are not happy with our performance we want to biohack our productivity we want so first i look at the sexual energy uh, sorry first i scan with the with the with the energy healing so i also use reiki as like a baseline for my work but then I get the messages and I feel the blockages and everything and it's different for everyone I go again as a witness I empty myself out completely I don't want to know a lot of information before the energy healing session or the scanning so my my ego mind, my intellect does not interfere. And I go mostly with intuition. I use myself as a channel because it's not my energy. We're just, you're a healer as well. You know that we're only channeling. We are used as a conduit. It's not basically us. We're just a conduit that the universe uses. And the more you purify and clarify yourself. So it actually takes a lot of work on our part because you can be going through a lot of stuff. So you need to always take yourself back to equanimity, to being centered, to being balanced in order to be able to channel. I'm sure that you, you, you people think yeah. that, oh, it's a walk in the park. Never a walk in the park. You finish <laughs> this test, you go next, 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 next. The universe does not give you a break, you know? No. So I finish one test, I go to the other challenge. There are always challenges for everyone, in, in my opinion, not because you're a coach, not because you're a healer. You don't navigate, navigate a lot of um, obstacles yourself. That's, that's at least my personal experience. So, so I do the, the first the scanning, and then I look at diet through Ayurveda. This is basically what I use to identify your dosha. And because I have a huge experience dealing with people and, and 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 going and asking the questions in folk medicine like whether people in peru or indigenous or in egypt or in turkey or in iran or in india so i always go and ask the questions what do you do what the grandmothers use what herbs do you have how do you heal yourself and the kitchens are the pharmacies in all these um you know cultures you just go and ask and 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 that's where my my kitchen is my pharmacy. So that's where most of my information come from, from the grandmothers, from the indigenous people. They they say, oh, we use this or we use that. And I also have experience with plant medicine. So I combine this 
wellness. And then I look at the sexual energy component because if the person is releasing constantly, whether a man or a woman, because the thing is, imagine it this way. You don't have sexual tension. If you're constantly satiated, you will not crave anything. You will mm -hmm. releasing all the time, but there has to be always this sexual tension, this sexual, this buildup has to be here for the men and for the women. So, so that if it, it also, this, this, um, Testosterone. It gives the man the power to go to the gym, to go work on his project, to have this drive to challenge. But if he's releasing constantly, there is no drive, there is no power there. These things, all the top athletes know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Because when I used to do MMA and my 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 team used to go to cage fights and I, I did not do cage fights. And my trainer used to tell the guys no sex before the match. But back then I did not study that much. I was not that much into sexual energy, into the, 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 the crux of the matter, to be honest. So I, so it, the coach should have said no releasing, no ejaculation before the match, but you can have sex. So orgasm and ejaculation are two different things. So you should not release, but you can have orgasm and you can have sex because sex is a, is a stress relief with all these endorphins, dopamine going into the body. So every, all the coaches and top athletes know what I'm talking about, that they should not release before a big, event even a project you know we have so many people who are famous for being abstinent like um nikola tesla was abstinent steve jobs was abstinent so many men now even talk about young men talk about not releasing not ejaculating constantly to keep and harness the power inside so if an entrepreneur or a startup founder wants to work on, on his power, on his mental power, I always say, okay, tell me your sexual habits. What do you do? What do you eat? How do you sleep? What is your, what is your exercise pattern? How do you release mental stress? All this important for performance, for wellness. Yeah. So, <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah, that all is... connected, all connected, all wow. connected. Yeah. It's like the sexual energy is so powerful, but so yeah. intricate, and it's like just like anything else in life. Basically, what I'm hearing is to be mindful, like yes. being being mindful and intentional with it, especially well, because it's from the creator. Well, look at everything you own and you care about. If you have a car. You take it to the car shop, you do yeah. the maintenance. Why you people don't do the same when it comes to the human body? And it's the most intricate vessel you have. People think that it takes care of itself. Yes, of course it takes care of itself mm -hmm. because you have a creator and a higher power who turns on and off your senses. You don't do that. Who takes care of your digestion. You don't do that. This is for people who don't believe in a creator. Who, who who turns on and you do, you don't turn on and off your your heartbeat your creator and your higher power takes care of that but at the same time your energy is your currency people who waste their energy you know you know like um what's the the, the right word it was on um, like the, on the tip of my tongue but like being careless you know like careless with your energy what else do you have if you don't have energy how can you even wake up in the morning you can't you cannot get out of bed so yes of course you need to be mindful and you need to learn what to do with your energy you need Absolutely. to know it's your currency and your health is your wealth people think about wealth when it comes to money mm -hmm. but if you are healthy this is your true abundance if you're mentally healthy, this is your true abundance because you cannot navigate life 
without having the, the power of being balanced and harmonious inside yourself to navigate life and and um and being a spiritual is not a luxury i think it's it's a must to to know how to to bring yourself back to to again to that peaceful place you know absolutely so so it's it's essential to know how to navigate this and it's essential to seek support because they don't teach this uh, this at school like you've been through a lot of therapy and a lot of navigation and a lot of courses and you and you tried tons of things till you came to where you came from but you took steps you did not yeah. just sit there same for me I was not, I was not, I like, I shopped, I traveled, I dated, nothing is working. So I needed to take responsibility for my own sanity. And I always say that, I always say that sanity is the new sexy, you know, <laughs> sanity is the new sexy. You need to learn to be sane in this world, seriously. Oh. You Sorry. need to learn to be sane. Sanity is the new sexy. You have to learn how to bring yourself back to sanity. So you need to be equipped. You need to have some skills under your belt. You need to seek the, the proper support in order to be able to navigate because we 100%. constantly in this virtual video game that we're living in, we constantly have levels like any video game. So, yeah. so you need to be able to say, hey, I, I need to slow down. Hey, I, I need to take a break here. Hey, I need to learn how to breathe. Who, yeah. who is going to help me here? You know, I, I need to see, because although my, my, my spiritual path is simple and direct, but of course you need support because we're not wired to think this way. We're not, the ego takes over all the time. So we're not wired to think, oh, I'm not this person. So, so right. you need to, to kind of like repeat, 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 repeat till it becomes a second nature, basically. So, right. yeah, a lot That's of stuff. <laughs> no, as I'm taking everything in, you know, you've discussed the, you know, sexual energy, the Tantra, working with trauma, the energy healing and the Ayurveda. It's like you are multifaceted, but I see one common connection between all this is like, you are really guiding your clients um, back to mindfulness and how to bring them back to equilibrium, bringing them back to that state or giving them resources or helping guide them back to that state of equilibrium and showing them how to do that, which in this world, we need that. Some people, we just like, look, you and I didn't know at the beginning and then we were just started experiencing things. So it's like you have a guidebook to help people bring them back to that state of intention and that mindfulness. Um, and that is such a beautiful gift, especially in this day and age when we have so many opportunities and distractions that we can reach and grab onto and brings us out of that state of mindfulness. So your sessions to me, what I feel, you know, I've had one with you is it helped me be more intentional and it helped me be more discerning and mindful. And I feel like that is a gift you can offer your clients. Like, yes, you're offering, you know, these energy healing, sexual energy, um, healings and all that, but at the core of it too, there's a mindfulness and an intention yeah. that's based in spirituality and connecting with creator. So Thank you for sharing. Thank you. All this. Wonderfully <laughs> put. <laughs> um, well said. Yeah. Thank you. Um, well said. Where can where can people find you? Where how can we connect? I mean, how how do you build your clients? Where where can we reach you? Is there platforms we can connect on? Uh, sure. I will share with you all my platforms. I have a YouTube channel. People can yeah. reach me on that and people can reach me on Instagram with Ask Amira. So my website is askamira.ca and I'll, I'll send you all the links. And my Instagram is also askamira.ca and yes. um, my, um, what else? My YouTube is Ask Amira. So it's all one name, which is Ask Amira, which is my brand name. But 
um yeah people can dm or people can book sessions on my um, on my website or they just reach out through email so so yeah it's beautiful uh, it's actually yeah Thank you. Well, I want everyone, you know, this is Amira. She obviously has an expansive wealth of knowledge, wisdom, and gifts to share with the world um, and can help you be more grounder and grounded and centered in your life and in helping you flourish, not only sexually, but in your business and whatever facet of your life. So thank you, Amira. Is there anything else that we didn't touch on that you'd like to explore before we hop off um, and before we have our next pep talk? <laughs> but the only thing I I urge people to to really be aware of, and it's so beautiful how many people now are more conscious and more they they hop on the 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 spirituality bandwagon, even if they are amateurs or beginners or they don't know where to start. But what I want to urge everyone is this is the best investment you can do. I mean, you cannot, I mean, there is like, like numbing yourself is not going to take you so far and you will just go back. So what I'm saying is seriously, take your mental and emotional health seriously and take responsibility for it. This is because otherwise, I mean, I took responsibility for my health a long time ago and that is why I... I, I went on this path, even like with wellness and Ayurveda and all this and, and navigating all this uh, natural health and, and, and wellness out there. There are so many people who offer a lot of wisdom. So what I'm saying is if you find a healer, if you need help, if you need support, take responsibility and go mm -hmm. and seek help and seek support because... Um, you know, it's never too late and there are people who can help you. So I urge everybody not to numb the, themselves out. Just just if you need help, go seek help. It's it's the best investment. Yeah, yeah that, that is like the most profound wisdom, just asking for help because it's such a vulnerable state of being. So thank you for that. Um, I so appreciate you just sharing your background, your gifts and sharing it with the world. So we can, you know, tap into this powerful energy that you help us find. And, um, I can't wait to connect further with you, Amira. Thank you. Same here, Caitlin. I'm so lucky. And thank you for your <laughs> amazing questions. Yes. Thank you for letting it, let it flow because it's not <laughs> easy. Sometimes I got stuck, but your, your open energy. Thank you so much. I appreciate you too. And I Thank can't you. wait for our next collaborations. Absolutely. Lots of love to you. Beautiful. Thank you. Same here. Thank <laughs> you. Bye.